The only thing that this shoe is missing is... Today we are talking about the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. One of two super shoes from Puma. But is it Big Cat Energy or is it Mid Cat Energy? See what I did there? Yeah, I am embarrassed for you. Right, okay, here's how this video is gonna go. I'm gonna cover the upper, the midsole, the outsole. Then I'm gonna talk about this shoe at every pace and final thoughts. Here we go. For the upper, I'm gonna roll 10 out of 10. There's nothing mid about this upper. Okay, it's super breathable, it's super thin. So you can really cinch down the laces across the eyelet chain up and down the throat of the shoe as Thomas from Believe and the Run says. Okay, now the problem with super secure lockdowns on really thin uppers historically for me means the top of my arches can kind of feel strangled by the laces and it leaves red marks. Now, the way to arrest this very violent problem is to add a little padding to the tongue, which Puma has done perfectly. Perfectly splendid. If you add too much, the weight goes up. You add just enough, and you get a 10 out of 10. Don't forget about the colorway. Yes, King, the colorway, straight fire, a raging inferno. The flames are licking the walls. As a writer, I can confirm anytime there is a fire, the flames must always lick the walls. Okay, midsole, eight out of 10. Bouncy, nitro foam, love nitro foam. Boun Did I say bouncy? Also, it has a plate, which is so subtle, you hardly know it's there. Very faint, it's like, a whisper of carbon, a secret. It's like the idea of a plate, like a distant memory. It's almost as if it's not even there. But it's bouncy, the foam is bouncy. Do we cover that? I think we, we love bounce. It's eight out of 10, midsole. Okay, outsole, eight out of 10. It is not as Puma grippy as other Puma shoes that I've run in. I ran on wet conditions a couple times in slid. But did you die? That was a terrible impersonation, and no, I did not. Okay, now let's talk about how it feels at every different pace. At easy pace, not great, which is to be expected from a super shoe. At steady paces or steezy paces, it feels a little bit better, but still, I didn't have much of a rhythm. At marathon pace, which I think the shoe is designed for, it feels pretty good. It feels a little heavier than the competition, which is weird because the shoe in my US men's size nine comes in at 6.7 ounces, but more on that later. All right, for threshold paces, this is where I feel this shoe shines the most. This is where the bounce comes all the way back. And what I mean by that is, sometimes with foam or with plates, you need to put a certain amount of pressure down in order to like bend the plate and get the snap back or to compress the foam and then get the bounce back in a very fluid way. So when it comes to the nitro foam at easier paces, I feel like my foot may sink in a little bit too much and I'm not getting all the energy return bounced back. And at higher foams, it's almost like I don't have enough pressure into the foam to get the foam before I'm onto my next stride. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but comfortably hard is the perfect pace for the energy return for the shoe. Lastly, for 5K work, it's gonna be a no for me dog because here's the deal for 5K work I personally don't like a lot of bounce in my shoe and that may just be my personal preference but I prefer something if anything to have a plate an aggressive plate like a Vaporfly or a Takumi Sen or maybe no plate at all and just let my feet and legs do the work so if I were gonna stay in the Puma family I would prefer the Liberate Nitro 1 or V2 for 5k interval work. Now this gets us to my main point and to the question of the thumbnail. Is this a super shoe or is it a mid shoe? Well, first in the words of Ritual, I think we need to define our terms here. What is a super shoe? To me, it's a cheater shoe. It's a cheat code, okay? You're running, it's deep into the race, your legs are tired and the shoe, the snap of the plate, the bounce of the foam is propelling you forward much faster and for longer than you would if you were just wearing a regular shoe. A super shoe should give you a legal, undeniable boost in performance. Like caffeine, legal drug, boosted performance. And this shoe, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite V1, is not it. It's not it, fam. Listen, it has all the ingredients of a super shoe, okay? The nitrogen-infused Piba midsole, the carbon plate, theoretically. It's a very light shoe. But super shoes aren't made on paper. They're made in the streets. You know what it is? It's an all-star player. It's not a franchise player, okay? It's Clay Thompson, it's not Steph Curry. It's Chris Bosh, it's not LeBron James. Those are basketball references. The only thing that this shoe is missing is the propulsion. Now, how Puma is needs to tweak it to get the propulsion, 
I don't know. I know the Vaporfly has a more aggressive plate. The Metaspeed Sky has a lot of rocker technology to it. The SC Elite V3 has Energy Arc technology. All of those shoes, I feel when I step into them, are driving me forward. This shoe is not. Now, how Puma gets there, I don't know. Final verdict, Puma DV8 Nitro Elite, Midcat Energy. However, all the ingredients are there. Puma just needs to mess with the recipe a little bit and they've got a winner.